All right, Shalom. Shalom. We're going to start by giving all praise and glory to Yahweh, by Shem, Yahweh Shai, by Shem, Rakakodash. The to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the Akimat and pushing the word of sincerity and truth. It's the brothers here from Great Millstone, Atlanta, myself, far as all. And, yeah, and we just have this lesson going into basically karma in the scriptures. Um, you know, um, a lot of people speak about karma in the world, and the, um, you know, the the notion of karma really is it, it reverts back to the scriptures you know whatever you uh dish out in the you know as people say in the universe it comes back in a particular fold if you um push out negative energy then um uh, you know through the law of attraction negativity will await at your front door you know um it's, and it, the same notion applies even on a positive uh light if you push out positivity then uh positivity will uh, spring forth through you know throughout your day to day so to speak and um you know what motivates us in the spirit to do this lesson is because you know you gotta you gotta always um ponder and uh live according to a, a life of uprightness and you don't want to push out negativity and, and be a, a negative you know individual so to speak because everything that you hash out is gonna it comes with a certain level of cost you know, and then you'll you'll wonder and you'll get into a certain predicament and you wonder why so much ill will is happening out to you or your family members, whether it's ailments and sicknesses or, or all kind of things uh, day to day. You know, a lot of times it can come from our karma, you know, and of course we're reaping the, the um, reaping the these the I would say sins of our of our past lives so we still have to to uh, pay off a particular level of debt and it's always about just doing good you know uh in your, your life you know doing righteousness living upright according to the law statutes and commandments so the negativity and wickedness doesn't uh follow your train so to speak follow your trails so you know with, without further ado we're going to go into the scriptures to show how um karma is located all throughout the bible from genesis all the way to revelations you know all right, this is um, Revelation, <clears throat> I'm sorry, Salakia, Galatians 6, um, and I'm going to start at verse 7. It says, Be not deceived, the Most High is not mocked, for whatever a man sow, that shall he also reap. It. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so whenever you sow something, that first and foremost, you have to break up the t and till the ground, and you have to uh, embed particular seeds within um, a, a ground, and then you have to wait for the process to reap up that which was sown. And um, a lot of times, subconsciously, you don't understand what you're sowing, whether through thoughts or whether through speaking. You know, the scriptures speak about how it's power in the tongue. So certain things you say, you know, you 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 have a particular debt that you have to pay for, even with that what you say. Yahweh Shah said it best. Every idle word that man shall speak, he has to, he has to give account thereof, because words... Um, so into uh people's spirits you know if you're a brother that uh, speaks bad or you're speaking ill upon another brother's name negatively bearing false witness what happens those thoughts so in another brother's spirit and it may take a while for him to be convinced or or, or be able to uh shake those demons that you have laid in the spirit and it might you know make it where that brother may fall off you yeah. know for for an example so that's one example amongst many on things that you sow and how you have to reap that, you see? And you have charlatans in the nation, you have all kind of uh, quacks and uh, jakes that um, are all about sowing discord, all about sowing uh, seeds of envy and jealousy amongst the masses. And that's why it says that they're going to be beaten with many stripes. That's going to be the karma of reward. Or, or the carnal reward for, uh, you know, basically sowing out carnality. Some more? A little bit more. It says, for he that soweth to, this is verse 8, 6 and 8, it says, for he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. You see? So even on, on a positive aspect, if you're doing good, good will come, come your way. And of course, the scriptures speak about how we're going to be, um, you know, have to have to reach the kingdom of heaven through much suffering. But you know what? It's still a good that actually even comes with suffering. The Lord wants you to suffer, and that that in 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 the Lord's eyes is a is a, a, a in certain times is a blessing, man. 
you might have to go through certain things and that's why you don't want to get the picture messed up don't think that everything good you do you're just going to get millions of dollars you're going to get fame and fashion uh social status and things of that nature if you do good you know it's, it's more trials and tests that come with the territory job was known to be perfect when you read the account and uh it was all kind of things that were, were to tempt him and try him to what per perfect his spirit that was uh um that was basically something that came around and you would think um you know, if, if you're doing good, why is so much negativity coming upon him? But what did Job say? He said, the Lord re rewardeth evil just as much as he rewards good. And the Lord giveth, and he shall also be able to take away. Right. And you see, after everything that Job went through, what did he receive? He received an uh, extreme slew of blessings. So at the end of the day, it's all about what we're going to receive on the latter end. And it tells us that if we endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So we're going to be able to uh, receive salvation. And also receive a slew of blessings that come with salvation. You know, real quick, you know, a lot of times when, when, when bad things happen, Jake, you know, he'll start to think, you know, how can I, how can I get over on this? What can I do? And, you know, um, he starts pondering evil thoughts about it, you know, and uh, that also plays into what, you know, what you're sowing. And I want to bring out a really quick scripture on that. Mm -hmm. This is uh, 1 Peter 3. And nine, and it says, not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing, but uh, contrarywise blessings. All right, so you know when something bad happens to you, you know like what happened to Job. His wife came up to him and told him to curse God to his face and die. You see, but he didn't do that because you don't render evil for evil. You know, you 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 continue to do good because this is the world that we live in, and this is the Most High's movie. You know, this is the Most High's show. So we're, 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 whatever the Most High puts upon us is what you need to bear. Mm -hmm. And suffering, you know, like the brother was saying, hey, look, you know, you may, you, may, you may be suffering and you need to be patient and something seemingly good may come your way. Mm -hmm. And the Lord may say to you, no, nah, that ain't it. And you may mm -hmm. deny it and you learn later on that that, that may have destroyed you, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And that happens to a lot of Jakes. A lot of Jakes are looking for the quick fix to something, you know. And... The quick fix ain't always the best fix, mm -hmm. you know. Sometimes you just got to wait it out. Continuing on, it says, um, it says, blessing, knowing that ye are there under, there unto call that you should inherit a blessing. So in the latter end of things, like the brother was just saying, you're going to inherit a blessing. All this stuff is fleeting. All this stuff is passing. This is all just vanity. So in the end, what are we going to inherit? If you hold yourself to this truth and to this standard, to the bitter end, what are you going to inherit? You're going to inherit the blessing, which is what? The kingdom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And like, like the brothers are not saying, you know, even though you have to go through these different, um, you know, these, these types of sufferings, it doesn't make you an evil person, but the Lord is trying you. That's, that's what's located in the scriptures, too. The scriptures speak about trials, tests, adversities. All these things come with the territory of prophesying the word of Yahweh by Shema Shah. And, you know, you read about certain men uh, still dealing with the karma aspect that uh, did ill by their neighbors, such as Saul and David, you know, Judas and Yahweh Shah. And, and what happened? The Lord put them to death, man. You know, Saul is, is, is basically in the hall of shame. And all that karma basically came around and, and bit him in the ass. You know, he built up a negative tab. He, um... Did evil by a, a righteous man constantly, and the Lord actually rewarded him with death. And that same thing applies for Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot sold the Lord out, and the karma actually turned around, and um, basically he had uh, committed suicide. So I have this precept. You have some more? Oh, no, I was it on that. Uh, this is 1 Thessalonians 5, and I started. Uh, which that was you just what was that when you just read with the uh, evil for good? That was uh, uh, first Peter, um, first Peter 3 and 9. Okay, well, the same thing is uh, spoken of in first Thessalonians 5 and 15. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing. 
and everything giving thanks, for this is the will of the Most High, and Yahweh Shai concern you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. So the scriptures keep reiterating the point of doing uh, goodwill in the eyes of Yahweh by Shema and you're going to receive blessings upon blessings. You know, and, and you might not receive it overnight. You know, you not, might, might not receive it this year. Because, see, Jake wants to do something quick and think the Lord is just going to deposit something in their, in, their, in their bank account, so to speak. Like it's a, uh, like you working hours. All right, I did five hours of, um, you know, community service. I, I gave to the poor this week. So, um, you know, Lord, God to reward me $5,000. No, it doesn't work like that, man. That's why the scripture says when you do good unto man, the Lord will repay you in due time. And you're really supposed to do charity without even thinking about receiving a return on it. That's where the that's where the um that's where the spirituality of it comes in. Love unfeigned, which is unchangeable, and you're not doing it looking for a, a, a reward, so to speak. You're doing it through sincere sincerity, and you're doing it because you humbly uh, love love the brethren around you. You see. You know, the scriptures say, uh, roughly paraphrasing, how I said, even the publicans give, you know, mm -hmm. they, 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 they look for their reward. It says, store your treasures up in heaven, you know, and that's, that's exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for the heavenly treasures because all this stuff down here, it, it'll rust. It can be moth-eaten, you know, and, and then not to mention, too, you know, you have brothers all the time that, that, that say they're in the faith and they say that they're charitable, they say that they're giving, they end up falling out, mm -hmm. you know. They end up falling out. So where was your charity and where was your faith and where was all that stuff at when you fell out? It wasn't there anymore, mm -hmm. you know? And that's why the scripture said the Lord will reward you in due time. Because the Lord got to see. He got to see whether or not you're really sincere about this thing, mm -hmm. you know? You get rewarded and you're not really sincere and you just got your reward for nothing because you're just going to turn your back later on. You need to, because the scripture says, the run is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but he that endured, you know? So mm -hmm. this is a race of endurance. Can you keep this up to the bitter end? Yeah, and Jacob tried to do things for like a tax return. The beginning of the year, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the beginning of a couple of months, they 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 uh, pay their taxes, pay their dues, and then uh, you know, the beginning of next year, they receive a big uh, lump sum. That's not how it works, man. You know, just do that which is right, and do it because you want to. You know, if it got to really be in you at the end of the day, if you want to do good, bro brothers, you know, you gotta. It's going to be like a thing of second nature. And the Lord, like I said, he will redo you, repay you in due time. Um, so it says, abstain from all e uh, uh, appearance of evil. Because what it said, uh, no good shall come unto him that's always occupied in evil. And the word evil goes into bad times. So if you're always uh, you know, in the, the assembly of wickedness, in the company of ill will, then guess what? That spirit is going to follow you. It's, it's, it's particular demons that that follow certain people that do ill, man, that do evil, and then they'll try to shake those demons off. And guess what? They don't go nowhere because you have, uh, you know, sown so much wickedness that that they have adapted to who you are. They have um, basically emerged or, or assimilated with who you are, and it starts to become you. Yeah. So it says to abstain, meaning to rid and to push off all manner of evil. And if you're abstaining from something, that means that you're turning to something um, that that's um, adverse to that. So if you're abstaining from evil, then that means you have to always be in the midst of good. All right, continuing on. And the very power of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray the most high, your holy whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord, Yahweh Shammashiach. And I just want to jump to um, 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians 1 and 6. Seeing it is a righteous thing with the Most High to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Yeah, and, and we even see who, who's the main person that's troubling on this, on this side is Esau. He's the one that's uh, passing out the ass whoopings. And it seems like he's not getting punished for it. You know? And what does it tell you in Ecclesiastes? Um, it basically says, um, you know... Even though somebody is, is, is doing wickedness for for a number of time, they feel like judgment is not uh, quick at the doors. But basically, judgment is going to uh, come speedily. You know? So that's why I tell you also in uh, Thessal not Thessalonians, but in Lamentations, to rejoice. So Edom. Edom is having their time of doing wickedness, but guess what? Going into karma, they're going to have to reap what they sow. 
and what does it say in Revelation 18? That it says, I've reached unto the, to the clouds. So they got, have a lot of things they got to pay for. They have a lot of debt that they have to uh, pay. And what does the scripture say? You know, slavery. You know, it takes, speaks about their women having to um, suffer. The children have to receive uh, uh, recompense. All these things have to come upon that nation for what they did unto the apple of the Lord's eye. Yeah. A little bit more. All right, sin is a righteous thing with the most high to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Yahweh Shah shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. You know, in flame and fire, taking vengeance of them that know not the Most High and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Yahweh Shah, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction for the presence of our Lord and from, from the glory of his power. And that's really the main point. You got anything up? Yeah, yeah, I got something. Okay. This is um, Romans um, 12. And 17, it says, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. You know, you want to have a good name, man. You know, that's what this all goes into, this is going to having a good name where, you know, when any, no matter who, whether it's an Israelite or heathen, when they look upon you, they can't say nothing bad about you. Mm -hmm. You know? Because you, even though evil things are happening to you, you're understanding, you're taking it in, you're bearing it, but you're not dishing out evil back in return. You're issuing, you're, you're issuing out good. And what that says is a person looks at you and be like, wow, I see all the shit he's going through. And man, look how look how he handled it. Mm -hmm. Look at the type of man he is, man. This is a man of integrity. This is a man of dignity, a man of honesty, you know. And they only can look upon you with that, with like, you know, they can't do anything bad about you. So say anything bad about you or do anything bad to you. So, you know, when they, if they did come at you like that, it'd, be, it'd just be evil, mm -hmm. you know. It'd be mm -hmm. wickedness. It says, if possible, as much as lieth in you, as much as lieth in you. So this is something that, that this is an inward thing. It says, live peaceably with all men. Okay? We understand that bad things happen. We know that things, that, 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 that wicked things happen. We know that, um, uh, uh, that evil may come upon you. But how do you handle it? You know? You know that people do bad things to you. But how do you handle it? You know? A lot of times you, you know... It's, it's all right to say, man, that dude was a nigga, but you know what? I'm going to go ahead and be the bigger person. Just be the bigger person and let it go, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 and keep it moving. Because ultimately, you know, when, when, you, when you decide to do evil, you take on evil, you know, and you start to fester with that evil. And that one evil can lead to another evil, which can lead to another evil. And they say you are stooped down to the level. Exactly. Kind mm -hmm. of. And it says, uh, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. But rather give peace unto wrath. And see, that's exactly what I just said. Hey, even though he's a nigga, man, I'm going to go ahead and let that go. You know, I'm going to give peace onto that because I'm not going to even uh, uh, put, put myself in that position. I'm not going to put myself in that mind state, you know, because that's what it takes. It takes, it takes a lot of energy, you know, to, to, to recompense evil for evil. You know, you got to actually plot and, and consider these things. And, 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 and those, that type of mindset takes a lot of energy, you know, and, and, what what can you be? What can you devote that energy to? You know, you can devote that energy to the scriptures. You can devote that energy to the word. You can devote that energy to the brethren. But you're devoting that energy to to evil, to evil thoughts. Okay, mm -hmm. and it says, um, for it is written, vengeance is mine; I will repay, saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the way that He repay ain't the way that you repay. Okay, just because you you ain't seen it happen, don't even, don't mean it ain't gonna happen. You know, just because it's not happening within the time frame that you think it's going to happen, don't mean it ain't going to happen. Mm -hmm. The Lord will repay. So you just got to sit back and watch. And trust me, I've seen it over and over and over again. The Lord does repay. And and sometimes it's, a, it's in a horrifying way. Sometimes it's a slap on the wrist, you know, because you, you have different levels in this thing. And sometimes the Lord may, may tell a brother, hey, man, you went off. I'm going to do this. And then Lord willing, the brother... You know, he come back. But then you have some brothers that are just, just totally gone. Yep. And they need another level of wickedness to, to, to straighten them out. And sometimes, like the brother said earlier, that may lead to death. Yep. That's why the scriptures speak about the sure mercies of David. And even David, he received mercy, but the Lord killed, um, you know, his son. You know, he, he jacked David up a couple of times. But, you know, like you said, at certain levels that the Lord will recompense every man. And the Lord might show grace unto you for trying to do the good right thing but you've been a, a victim of you know the flesh so to speak you've done things fool, foolishly but sometimes you know depending on what you do there's no coming back 
And that's why we have to walk on eggshells with our actions, you know, because we do reap what we sow. And uh, you had some more on that? Nah, that was it. Well, I'm going to uh, close with this one. This is uh, Philippians 2 and 15. It says that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of the Most High, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom he shines as lights in the world. Yeah, and that's what it's about. Like the brother just said, you know, even though we're in the midst of wickedness, that doesn't make it where we have to be uh, just like everybody else. We know that um, Yahweh Shemi Awashai is, is to return and, and gather the virgins that's adorned and all white. They're, they're actually staying pure in the midst of, of filthiness and a defilement. All right. We all know that this is the valley of the shadow of death. But light is a uh, light and life is still prevalent here. And, and we know that it's through the, through the washing of the word. So we have to stay in the word so that we can stay pure, you know, and um, you had anything else? Nah, that was it. You know, so this is just a, you know, a lesson just to reiterate karma. You know, you reap what you sow, do good. So good could come upon you, you know, stay away from the evil and just try your best to walk on that straight and narrow, you know. So we want to end it by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rakaq Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, my king. Shalom.